and another pan of this little blip in the road, if you will, a mini square. Some subtle detail there, probably 19th century early. There in the background, a very lovely, impressive looking dome for a church. Something somewhat British, but I don't really know, is the Amber Apple. This is apparently the Philharmonic or cultural center for that sort of thing. There's some church in the background through that archway that we'll explore at a later time. Love those narrow alleyways or streetways. We'll pursue those in a later time. It's like a very important cultural restaurant of some kind of focus on cheeses. I wonder what this monument is for other than for dogs. But it has the name of this cheese place. So it has some significance, and what is that little critter there? An anteater or aardvark? That hotel patronizing to its patrons, including hopefully Americans. Standing back of the street we've come down to the right is the Turkish embassy with a, what looks like a communist half circle, looking down the square and down the main street even deeper into Old Town, although this may be considered the core since the town hall is here. Later this morning I hope to go on a walking tour. This is the town hall. I'm looking to the left and on that same street we just came down, but with an interesting perspective on these other churches. This first large one we saw moments ago, and this one in the background that I think may be what we passed just as we came from the gate of dawn. Through an archway off that main square into this, what looks like a well-heeled Lexus BMW residential area in the core of Vilnius. You wonder if little stones like this are re subtle reminders of the deep past of this area. What it was used for, perhaps to block a door from opening too far. Apparently a prized local bar for tourists. Notice this awning that opens up to the right and left. Very clever. Again, the small street that curves off away from the main square. We'll explore that later. Off to the right of the town hall as we look back at it, another church in the distance and to the left, the main road that we walked down. And then this square, which is really a triangle, narrows down past this church. This square and an archway entitled Kitchen. But one can only imagine the past. called the Mansion, established 1677, the Mansion Hotel, being apparently restored in some sense, or upgraded, and perhaps that's what it used to look like. I hope they leave that as it is, so we can appreciate how this looked at an earlier time. A nice Italian sounding name, looking back in the distance at the town hall. And this pretty little triangular square, for lack of a better term. Square is interesting for another reason, and that's these bedraggled display of old photographs. I've seen the same treatment 
of old historical photographs in some other city, I think probably in Poland. Really wonderful in one sense, and that is they give you a large view into the past. A floating pontoon bridge in its day, opposite whatever church this is, with a little effort we could probably define it. It may well be that these little structures that display these photographs are in fact tradesmen's kiosks for something. Another modest church. This is the Russian Orthodox Church of St. Parasurve or something like that. <clears throat> The church was first built by Algirdas in 1345, a name I'm familiar with in the history, but only vaguely. A pagan temple apparently stood here before, and after a new fire, a church was built at the end of the 16th century. The Tsar of Russia visited in 1705 and a few years later presenting Swedish flags that had been taken in battle. A bit of historical nuance. Uh, the Russian Tsar baptized his African protege, Hannibal, who later married a Russian noble and became the great-grandfather of the great Alang poet, Alexander Pushkin. This church was built in 1865. The interconnection of human beings seems so curious, and yet the theory of six degrees of separation contends that because we are all linked, by chains of acquaintance, you are just six introductions away from any other person on the planet. And reinforced a bit. If we could identify that church, and maybe we will during this trip, be able to do so. This illustrates my point about how much land used to be around those churches that now has been sold off in order to fund the church. Guessing this is either sand or salt. This is a view I suspect from Vilnius Castle which is far to our left down the hill here and up on a promontory. Imagine if it were possible to transport ourselves back into the minds of the two people in this horse-drawn carriage. Again, probably at some event, with regard to this church on the right, are all the folks gathered, or at least their carriages gathered, and maybe that's some form of little market for those wagons. Before the city hall, one wonders what was this young boy's life like. It's been lived and gone. This be winter in front of, I don't think that's the city hall, but what are those towers for? What was the history at the very moment this picture was taken on a seemingly beautiful summer day? To be people gathering about a store or going to it? Ladies out shopping. Looks like it was a soggy day. These photographs are duplicated here, so perhaps these little kiosks at one time were spread about in different parts of the city. A bit of street art perhaps reflecting the connection between pretzels, birds, and humans. Or is that just a human hand and a human foot? Probably.